Income Tax 2022-2023 Makers Depreciation Additional Rules for Listed Property. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Most of this information comes from publication 946, How to Depreciate Property Tax Year 2022. You can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one, income. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is, in essence, an income statement, but just an outline, other forms and schedules flowing into these line items. One of those the schedule c which has business income minus business expenses the net business income from the schedule c flowing into line one income of the income tax formula we're looking at the page one of the form 1040 remembering that the schedule c flows into the schedule one which flows into line eight page one form 1040 we see here the schedule c is the profit or loss from business in essence, an income statement, income minus expense sections. We are focused on the expenses here. More specifically, we're focused on depreciation type of items. Remembering that even if using a cash based system, you're going to have to deviate from that oftentimes for depreciable property, putting the item on the books as an asset. Depre Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Appreciating it over the useful life in accordance with the tax code. So now we're gonna go into the special rules for additional rules for listed property. Introduction. This chapter discusses the deduction limits and other special rules that apply for certain listed property. Listed property includes cars, probably the big one there, and other property used for transportation, property used for entertainment, and certain computers. So deductions for listed property other than certain leased property are subject to the following special rules and limits. Now, one way to think about this is you might think, well, cars, why would there be a special rule for these items and some of these like entertainment, for example? And the general idea may be that they're concerned that you might be purchasing a very expensive car more than might be needed for the business use purposes. And therefore, it would seem that the value of the car part of it might be applied to personal use or something like that. So the, you might think that the more restrictive rules are based on that kind of concept. So for example, if you were if you were just driving commuting miles to go to visit clients or something like that, and you're doing so in a $200,000 car, then you would expect that the car is overpriced for just the need of getting from point A uh, to point B. And if you were to allow it to get some of these, the added accelerated depreciations uh, up front in the current year, that would be even, more kind of uh, maybe abusive uh, they would they could think about with those kind of things. So you have these more restrictions in any case, that's what happens. So deduction for employees. So if your use of the property is not for your employer's con uh, convenience or is not required as a condition of your employment, you cannot deduct depreciation or rent expense for your use of the property as an employee. So that's kind of the, the general the general rule is the, is the case that if you are an employee, then the employer is usually the one that's thought that's going to be taking care of the expenses uh, for the employee. So business use requirements. So if the property is not used predominantly more than 50% for, for qualified business use, you cannot cl claim the Section 179 deduction or a special depreciation allowance. Those are the two big added depreciations basically often allowing you to take the full depreciation, you know, or the full expense in the year you put the asset on the books in the first place. And again, because of the nature of these items, you can see why they might be skeptical. Skeptical Air 5.
example of someone taking that those big depreciations in year one uh, of, of the property. So obviously if it's, so once again, if the property is not used pr uh, predominantly, that's more than 50% for qualified business use, you cannot claim the section 179 deduction or the special depreciation allowance. In addition, you must figure any depreciation deduction under makers using the straight line method over the ADS recovery period. So note that usually you would think that this kind of property given the category and the life of the property might be uh, using the GDS and using the double declining method, but they're restricting that to the straight line uh, ADS recovery. So you may also have a recapture include in income, income any excess depreciation claimed in previous years. A similar uh, inclusion amount applies to certain leased property. So passenger automobile limit and rules. Annual limits apply to depreciation deductions, including the 179 deduction and any special depreciation allowance for certain passenger automobiles. You can continue to deduct depreciation for the uh, unrecovered basis resulting from these limits after the end of the recovery period. Okay, so this chapter defines listed property and explains the special rules and depreciation deduction limits that apply, including special inclusion amount rule for leased property. So it also discusses the record keeping rules for listed property and explains how to report information about the property on your tax return. Useful items you may want to see. So you have other publications you could dive into for more information. 463, that's the travel, gift, and car expenses, which kind of dovetails on this item here. You've got publication 535, business expenses, which obviously dovetails here. We're talking about depreciation for listed property. And publication 587, business use of your home. Forms and instructions you may want to look at. You've got the form 2106, employee business expenses. The form 4562, depreciation and amortization and Form 4797, Sales of Business Property, that you can check out for more research if you so choose. Look at the instructions for those forms as well. All right, so what is listed property? Listed property is any of the following. Passenger automobiles, defined later. Any other property used for transportation unless it is an accepted vehicle. And property generally used for entertainment, recreation, or amusement, including photographic, uh, phonographic, communication, and video recording equipment. So you can imagine that certain industries, by the way, are more likely to be using some of these items. And, and then you've got these questions in terms of, you know, was it business and personal use, which gets a little bit more difficult when you're dealing in a business that seems a little bit more fun <laughs> in nature. But in any case, improvements to listed property and improvement improvement made to listed property that must be capitalized is treated as a new item of depreciable property similar fashion to improvements we've seen before it's an improvement it's increasing the life of the property or something like that then you'd have to put it on the books as an asset as opposed to expensing it and record it as an improvement a separate item so the recovery period and method of depreciation that applies to the listed property as a whole also apply to the improvement. The improvement then follows in alignment with the general rules of the property that it's improving. So for example, if you must depreciate the listed property using the straight line method, you must also depreciate the improvement using the straight line method. Passenger automobiles, what are those? A passenger automobile is any four-wheel vehicle made primarily for use on public streets, roads, and highways and rated at 6,000 pounds or less of unloaded gross uh, vehicle weight, 6,000 pounds or less of gross vehicle weight for trucks and vans. So you've got this 6,000 kind of uh, pound limit. Now, this became kind of an issue because... Uh, the idea would be, well, it would be passenger if it was lighter than that. And if it was over 6,000 pounds, that it would be more like on the machinery type of things, like a work truck type of things. But then they, they got into some areas where, where, they, where you, might, you might try to hit that 6,000 pound limit on certain SUVs or something, which actually incentivized people to buy heavier automobiles, which is not at all what the tax code wanted to happen. So that became kind of a the weight limit became kind of a messy thing. <laughs> so it includes 
any part, component, or other item physically attached to the automobile at the time of purchase or usually included in the purchase price of an automobile. The following vehicles are not considered passenger automobiles for this purpose. So an ambulance, uh, hairs and uh, combination ambulance hearse and used directly in a trade or business. You got a vehicle used directly in the trade or business of transporting persons or property for pay or hire and a truck or van that is a qualified non-personal use vehicle. So qualified non-personal use vehicle. So notice what you would kind of like then, if you're, if you're trying to deduct as much as possible, th then the idea would be if it's, if it's gonna be included as a passenger automobile, that's likely to limit the amount of depreciation that you could de deduct at least on the earlier years. You'd like to deduct more on the earlier years if you can. Therefore, you would like to not be classified as a passenger vehicle if possible, but rather as, as a, work, a work vehicle of some kind because then you're likely to have more favorable depreciation methods. That's the general idea that you want to kind of have in your head when you're thinking through these rules. So qualified non-personal use vehicles. So this would be good usually if they can qualify for non-personal because then you might have more favorable depreciation methods, depreciating more upfront. So qualified non-personal use vehicles are vehicles that by, that by their nature are not likely to be used more than a minimal amount for personal purposes. They include the trucks and vans listed as expect as uh, accepted vehicles under other property used for transportation. So it's not likely to be a personal item. If your people are driving around their work van, it's not exactly the same kind of thing as someone driving like a you know hundred thousand sedan or something around. Around you know it's not like you know it doesn't seem. So they also include trucks and vans that have been especially modified so that they are not likely to be used more than a minimal minimal amount for personal purposes such as installation of permanent shelving and painting the vehicle to display advertising or the company's name so so that is you know that that kind of obviously deteriorates the value for just personal use although you could still use it for personal use but it's not like the same kind of thing of having a really expensive you know just personal car that you happen to be driving around for business stuff. So for a detailed discussion of passenger automobiles, including leased passenger automobiles, see publication 563, if you want to dive into this in more detail. Other property used for transportation. Other property used for transportation includes trucks, buses, boats, airplanes, motorcycles, and any other vehicle used to transport persons or goods. So caution. Although vehicles, so notice that if it's for transportation, like a bus, a truck that is used for transporting, then again, you would think that they're not using that for personal use and therefore might not have the same kind of restrictions you would have on like a, 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 a sedan, a passenger vehicle that you would think would be used for personal use a lot. Caution, although vehicles used to transport persons or property for pay or hire and vehicles rated at more than 6,000 pound threshold are not passenger automobiles, they are still, quote, other property used for transportation, end quote, and are subject to the special rules for listed property. So once again, they're trying to pick up that 6,000 pound thing and still say it could be listed property. So you gotta be careful uh, with it being still listed property. Again, so although vehicles used used to transport persons or property for pay or hire and vehicles rated at more than six, uh, more than the 6,000 pound threshold are not passenger automobiles, they are still uh, other property listed for transportation uh, and are subject to the special rules for listed property. So they are subject to the rules. So accepted vehicles. Other property used for transportation does not include the following qualified non-personal and use vehicles defined earlier under passenger automobiles. You got the clearly marked police and fire vehicles. You've got the unmarked vehicles used by law enforcement officers if the use is officially authorized. You've got ambulances used as such and hearses used as such. You, you would think that these would be vehicles that would be used in the you know for work generally any vehicle with a loaded gross vehicle weight of over 14,000 pounds that is designed to carry cargo now we're getting quite heavy uh, bucket trucks cherry uh, pickers cement mixers dump trucks including garbage trucks 
flatbed trucks and refrigerator trucks. So those were clearly work-related items you would think. Com uh, combines, cranes, uh, derricks, and forklifts. Delivery trucks with seating only for driver or only for the driver plus a, full, a folding uh, jump seat. So qualified moving vans, qualified specialized utility repair trucks, school buses used in transportation students and employees of schools, other buses uh, with a capacity of at least 20 passengers that are used as passenger buses, tractors, and other special purpose farm vehicles. So clearly marked police and fire vehicles, a clearly marked police or fire vehicle is a vehicle that meets all the following requirements. It is owned or leased by a government unit or an agency or instrumentally of a governmental unit. Uh, it, is, it is required to be used for commuting by a police officer or firefighter who, uh, when not on regular shift, is on call at all times. It is prohibited from being used for personal use other than commuting outside the limit of the police officer's arrest powers or the firefighter's obligation to respond to an emergency. And it is clearly marked with a painting insignia or words that make it readily apparent that it is a police or fire vehicle. A marking on a license plate is not a clear marking for these purposes. All right, we got the qualified moving van. A qualified moving van is any truck or van used by a professional moving company for moving household or business goods if the following requirements are met. No personal use of the van is allowed other than the travel to and from a move site or the minor personal use such as a stop for lunch on the way from, from one move site to another. Personal use for the travel to and from a move site happens no more than five times a month on average. Personal use is limited to situations in which it is more convenient to the employer because of the location of the employee's residence in relation to the location of the move site for the van not to be uh, returned to the employer's business location. So it's not a commuting type of vehicle. In other words, it's the general idea because it's, 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 that's not its general purpose. It's for moving stuff. So qualified special utility repair truck. So this is another common one, fairly common depending on some industries. A truck is a qualified special utility repair truck if it is not a van or pickup truck and all the following apply. The truck was uh, specifically designed for and is used to carry heavy tools, testing equipment, or shells, racks, or other permanent interior construction has been installed to carry and store the tools, equipment, or parts and would make it unlikely that the truck would be used other than minimally for personal purposes. So the employer requires the employee to drive the truck home in order to be able to respond in emergency situations for purposes of restoring or maintaining electricity, gas, telephone, water, sewer, or steam utility services.